On the surface, the life of Christian musician Steve Green seems picture perfect. He was born the son of missionaries, attended Christian schools, sang for Christian bands, and launched his own music ministry in 1983. But there was a time when an internal struggle raged between the Steve Green everyone saw on stage and the Steve Green only Steve knew. God, I give up for 10 years. I've been uh, doing a tug of war with you. I've been wanting my own way, but um, I don't know you, I don't love you, I don't think I anything you. There's a story to be told of every life made new. A testimony to God's grace and the love he has for you. Though the stories may be different, the tie that binds stays the same. A tapestry of life held together by the hand of God with the eternal thread of Christ. Four years old, uh, when my parents uh, moved five children down to South America. First stop was Costa Rica, where they went to language school to learn Spanish, and then on to Argentina. My parents were located in the very northern three provinces uh, of Argentina, it's where we worked 13 years that I, that I was there. Lived in the very northern province called Salta, in a small town called Tartagal. Living in Argentina was, of course, a, a big culture shock for us, uh, coming from the United States and moving down there. My dad was great at coming up with ideas to gather a crowd so he could preach. And uh, there were times when he'd have us set up on some street corner and start playing clarinet and my brother played a trumpet and my other brother a guitar. And people looked at us as, you know, I don't know, kind of like a freak show. We, they'd never seen anything like it. Three white, you know, blonde <laughs> kids playing instruments. They'd never seen a clarinet or a trumpet. I mean, the native instruments were very different than that. People would just come, and as a crowd gathered, then my father would, would preach the gospel. Sometimes rocks would be hurled at you from the back, or people would say things like, go home, Yankee, or other, other names that weren't so nice. And I think in that context, as brothers, we hung together pretty closely. I saw in my father and mother's life a genuine love for Christ and a genuine love for the people. It wasn't just a professional missionary doing work. Uh, it was very real. I suppose the greatest example of it to me was the way that they loved. Well, that had a very profound impact on me. Like most missionary children, I was sent off to boarding school with Steve and my oldest brother and sister. I remember just sobbing, uh, looking out the window as my parents drove off. I'm sure it broke their heart as well. Um, in those days, it was the only option that they had. That first year of, of the boarding school, during one of the nap times on Sunday afternoon, I was reading a Sunday school paper that they'd given to me and it gave a missionary story on there. I read it and for the first time realized, you know, I've never done this. I've never personally um, said, Lord, forgive me and I need you as my savior. So I knelt down by the bed and, and prayed that. I went out to the playground afterwards and told the kids, hey, guess what I just did? <laughs> I just, I, gave, I became a Christian. <laughs> it was an eight-year-old confession of faith. You know, the next years were still years in a boarding school, hard years, all kinds of changes happening emotionally, physically, and who do you talk to, who do you ask? I came back to the States to start high school. And that was a thrill for me. I mean, back to the homeland. Uh, it was, I'd been looking forward to this for a long time. Uh, everything was different. Uh, wide, clean roads, big, shiny cars, uh, shopping centers, grocery stores packed. Everything was different. It was unbelievable. It looked like the whole country was Disneyland to me. Lived here for a couple years, then went back to South America at age 16, right before my 16th birthday, taken back out of the promised land, just before I got my driver's license. All my friends were getting ready to get their own cars and work and all this, and I'm taken back to South America. I think that was really the beginning of uh, some resentment. Um, you know, it's one thing when you're eight, it's more of a hurt but when you're 16, um, it, it, I think, uh, turns into seeds of 
resentment and bitterness. And uh, I almost felt like I was, I was a captive. Steve began in those years to really desire to be more of an American than an Argentine. And I think his heart began to really move towards the States and away from the people there. And I think developed maybe in his heart a, the attitude that you know, once I leave here, I'm not coming back. That hardness uh, grew and lasted for 10 years until I was 26. That's a long, dry, wandering period. And during that period, lots of things happened. I eventually came back to the States, enrolled in college. He picked me up in a car and he was pretty cool. I was pretty impressed. He was driving and uh, had the windows down, the radio on, and he was pretty much all American at that point. Uh, traveled with uh, a music group. What is this coming out of your mouth? <laughs> singing some big notes and singing loud. We were surprised by the ability that he had. We didn't know that he had that kind of voice. We were, I think, all a little bit shocked. Met my wife. I remember he was shy, very shy when I first met him. And so shy that it almost kind of took me back. I uh, was married, ended up working with the Gaithers. We are so a lot happened in that 10 year span uh, that actually was laying the foundation and groundwork for what I do today, uh, musically, uh, but I was still in a wasteland spiritually. I was Christian externally, meaning, um, you know, I still went to church, but that was about it, really. And, and even when I was involved in music, uh, it was more music than anything else. I would say I was a voice for hire. Uh, I sang because I was paid to. Add marriage to that, and from outside appearances, it looked like we had a good marriage. I thought we had a good marriage. I guess you're blind a little bit. You don't realize in what condition you're in until, you, until it changes and you realize where, you know, that really was nothing compared to what it is now. There was not the spiritual union that is so necessary for the bonding of a real whole marriage. We were both singing back up for the Bill Gaither Trio on the weekends and it was a good life. I thought it was a good life. I had no idea what was going on in his private life. If I'm not a captive by Christ, then I'm going to be, in some degree or another, captive to sin, to my own passions and, and desires. And that's where I was. Into that situation, um, God sent my older brother, Randy. He had just been through uh, uh, his own personal revival experience. We were all converging on Phoenix for my sister's wedding, and he picked me up at the airport, and I, I could tell immediately something's different. God was just burdening my heart to tell them what God had done in me and what I felt he wanted to do in their lives as well. I told them very specifically areas where there had been sin in my life and bondage and how Christ had set me free. He's concerned about our lives and exhorting us to get right with God. And he began to cry, and it was very emotional. And this, I mean, this was not the Randy we knew. And how the Holy Spirit had gotten a hold of my heart in a way that I had never experienced. I'm thinking, man, what happened to this guy? You know, this is really weird. And for the next three days, that's all he did. And uh, over the course of that time, um, I began to grow resistant to him. I resented him getting in everyone's face and talking about God. You know, you could talk about God for a while, but not all the time. That's, that's not normal, see. Came to a head where we were in a car. I couldn't get away, and he started his rampage again, you know. Uh, the days are, are short. Uh, you've got to be right with God. Uh, the only thing that counts is living for Christ, you know, on and on. And uh, just something inside of me welled up in anger against him. Coming up, find out how Steve's confrontation with his brother changes his life forever. I ended up that night on my knees saying, uh, God, I give up. And later, how God gives Steve a new direction in his music career. Then a strange thing happened. There, there was the formation of a life message 
when testimony, profiles, and faith continues.